I don't have a lot of meetings, but it just so happens I have two this evening, so I'm sorry for that. It's interesting, one of the overriding things in both the Old Testament and the New Testament is water. Those that all took place in a very arid kind of place. So whenever you hear water mentioned in the Bible, it's a real concern there. Let's pray. Oh God, we give thanks for all of your incredible blessings. You are the one who brought into being this incredible universe. You brought into being each one of us. And through that, you have concern for each of us. You have planted within us as well concern for each other. And so we pray that that might be uppermost in all the minds here this evening. We would ask for your wisdom, your inspiration, your guidance. Amen. Citizens, I would ask that you would all please, if you have a cell phone, would you please turn it off? I would appreciate it. And also, I'd like to welcome Don Heller. He has been at EP8. He is our first person to speak this evening. Don. I would like to thank everybody here. I've never had a public meeting that had this many people. This is fantastic. I think that's one thing I've, ever since I've been coming to St. John, I've really been impressed by the interest everyone has shown. And that's really unusual for me. Okay, what I have tonight is a talk that I gave at Kansas World Water Association last spring. Um, and I am very informal. If at any point in time you have a question, you don't understand anything, stand up and yell, that's fine. Uh, you know, like I said, I will be going through these slides. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about nitrate removal. And then I've built three plants already, have them up in operation, and I've got pictures of them. And so we can talk about what will be similar to what you have here, what will be the same. And uh, so, like I said, if you have any questions, yeah. Okay. Uh, nitrates, which is what we're concerned about here. You have a couple of your wells that are over the limits, depending on the time of year. And, uh, but it can be over the limit for the state uh, regulations of nitrates. Nitrate or is a water-soluble molecule comprised of nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrate is a chemical found in most fertilizers, manure, and liquid waste discharge from septic tanks. Water naturally contains less than one part per million of nitrates. And the limit in with KDHE and the federal EPA is 10 parts per million of nitrates. So you can see where, where we are compared to the normal background. Of, of nitrates. Higher levels than one part reflect some type of contamination. In Kansas, the two most likely contributors to nitrates in water are feedlot, feedlot runoff and fertilizer. Rain or irrigation carries the extra nitrates from these two sources into the groundwater. Ten years ago, when I first started hearing about nitrates, Nobody was willing to say where nitrates were coming from. Everybody was real, real leery. Well, now it's pretty common knowledge that it's either fertilizer or feedlots where the big majority of nitrates come from. In 1974, the federal EPA established a limit for nitrates of 10 parts per million. And in 1992, they reevaluated and upheld. Kansas has also set the same regulation. If public water supply exceeds this level, providers are required to notify residents as soon as practical, but no later than 24 hours after the system learns of the violation. Okay, this is just some common sources. Uh, again, you can see septic tanks is, is one. Years ago, when St. John was really young, probably every house in town had a septic tank. And that was, that could still be showing up uh, even now. 
you know, that's one of the re big reasons that everybody went to to uh, collection systems and their own and the town sewer system. But uh, but they get they get covered, carried down into the water, and then you have a well that will pick up uh, the nitrates. And then this is now this is this will bring it home to everybody. You know, we're about right there in the center part of Canada. We the red, it's kind of tough to tell. The the red is where the high nitrates in the United States are located, primarily. Of all the plants that I'm working on, they're all in the western half of Kansas. We've got one in this in just kind of down here uh, at Anthony. It's just really on the borderline. But uh, this is this is where you are. You know, it's just kind of the way things are nowadays. Elevated nitrate levels have been linked to enlarged thyroid and many different types of cancer. The most common condition arising from high nitrate intake affects infants younger than six months of age. The most notable symptom of nitrate poisoning is a bluish skin coloring around the eyes and mouth. The resulting oxygen deprivation is known as blue baby syndrome. It can be fatal if not caught and treated promptly. But by the age of six months, the digestive system of the baby is developed enough that the risk uh, is greatly reduced. If a distribution system nitrate level exceeds the nitrate level of 10 parts, an alternate source of drinking water must be provided to free of charge for all infants less than six months of age and pregnant women. Well, this drinking water must also meet all the regulations. And this is going to be a little scary to you. Several years ago, I had a friend that had a water treatment plant, and he had a big lab in this. And so he got to wonder, does all this bottled water it's out there meet the regulations? So he had, I think it was 25 different types of bottled water that he ran through his lab. There was only two of the 25 met all the regulations that he had to meet providing drinking water. I can't tell you which kind, which those two were, but uh, and I don't know, I don't really don't know how you're going to check on it. But be aware that just because you're you're buying bottled water may or may not meet all the regulations. Reducing nitrate levels in drinking water can be done in a number of ways. Two options for drinking, for reducing the nitrate concentration, is one is by blending with another. That's if you have water that's low enough in nitrates that you can mix in with, with water that's high in nitrates, it's a direct average. If you have one gallon a minute and ten parts of, of nitrates, and you mix it with one gallon a minute and two parts of nitrates, it's going to be 10 plus 2 divided by 2 is 6 parts. It is a direct average. And, and that works fine as long as you have a control system so that if your high nitrate well is running, your low nitrate well has to be in operation as well. You don't ever want to be in a situation where your blending is what you're doing and not have your low nitrate well in operation because then you're out of luck. Okay, another way is finding a new source of water. Sometimes that can be done, sometimes not. I, I worked with the town of Belpre, not too far from here. About 15 years ago, they had one well get over the limit in nitrates. And so that's what they did. They found they moved about a half mile west of town, drilled a new well, everything was great. In less than 10 years, that new well went way over the limit on nitrates. They just, they can't even use it. The bad part of it is they set it up on a 40-year payment plan. And so within 10 years, they can't use it. They still got over 30 more years to pay it. <coughs> so finding a new well source may work for you, but you have to be careful. Now, one thing we have been very fortunate here in St. John <coughs> is that we have found some water out here kind of the northeast part of town that is real low on nitrates. 
and we are going to, as much as we can, blend with it. But the, the nitrate level and the, and the water level up closer to the surface is pretty high. And the, the water the level of work, the water that we found is down lower. We're going to pump the new wells real slow, at a slower rate, because we don't want to pull that higher nitrates down into the, to the, the water that we're using. Because of that, we're not going to have enough of the real low nitrate water to do a lot of blending. So it's something we're working on. We're still we're still trying to make it work, but. Uh, when you only have a limited quantity of low nitrate water, your blending options are really limited. Any questions? Got it. Come on, somebody has a question. Okay. Uh, <coughs> another option is uh, electrodialysis. <coughs> and uh, it passes electricity through the water and it precipitates the nitrates down. That I know of, this has never been done in the United States, and so it's really it's listed as an available technology, but we don't ever really look into it. Another is reverse osmosis. Uh, maybe some of you have, have an RO unit, small RO unit in your house. They work great. They not only take out nitrates, but if you have anything else in the water, it'll take it out. The bad part about RO is that uh, for an in-house unit, it wastes somewhere between 50 and 75 percent of the water. For a commercial size RO unit, it will waste 25 to 40 percent of the water. You don't have enough water whites to pour that much water down the drain. <clears throat> so for that reason, RO is not used very often to take out nitrates unless you have something else in the water, like Hutchison has put one in in their downtown area, but it's when they had from the old cleaning, uh, dry cleaners. They had a lot of junk in their water and they figured, okay, if we get 50% of the water, it's, we're better off than we were. Like I say, <coughs> if nitrates is really all you're looking at, RO, it will do the job, but you waste so much water that it's really very rarely used. How does it waste the water? With RO, you can go to your sewer system, you can go to a stream, you can go, RO water is to where you can just do about whatever you want with it. I mean, I don't think you're going to want to just run it down the ditch or uh, you know, a curb and gutter. But if you have a stream someplace, you know, like I say, if you have enough capacity in your sewage treatment plant, you can go there with RO uh, wastewater. But how does it waste the water? How does it waste? You didn't answer. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Um, now, a true RO person is going to knock me upside the head for telling me this, but my opinion of RO is basically it's just a real fine filter. It's just, I mean, it's just what it is, is, and it only lets the water go through. And then it, how it keeps operating is they, just, they, they wash off the face of the filter, and that's what becomes the wastewater, is what, what wastes off washes off the face of the filter and that's why it takes so much because it just it has to continuously wash the face of the filter off and what goes through i mean is only the water in fact it sometimes water is so pure that it will eat up not eat up the pipe but it cleans up your pipe so much that it can almost be a problem on the other side but that's what, what RO is, is. What the wastewater is, is that wastewater water that's, that's taking the contaminants out. Which would be more, take more water than backwashing filters? Oh, much, probably 10, 20 times. What, what we're looking at here, I'm getting ahead, but what we're looking at here is a system that's made by Lane Christensen. And it has less than 1% of backwash waste. And that is going down, you know, as they make advances. Like I say, RO will be anywhere from twenty to forty percent of waste. So that's that's why like I say in western Kansas I haven't had anybody that had an extra twenty or thirty percent, forty percent of water rights that they could just waste. So that's why RO is not used very often. 
And I do know in, in northeast Kansas, there was a little town that put in an RF system for nitrates. And they were right next to a stream, and they could just, they had lots of water, and they had water rights, and they just could dump their waste into the stream and go. So you can capture the water, and it's, it's going to be okay to use. Pardon? You can capture the water for reuse. The RO waste stream? Well, everything that you're taking out is now concentrated. So if you had nitrates going in there at 15 parts per million, your nitrates in that wastewater are going to be 25 or 30 parts. And, and anything else, like I said, RO takes it all out. And if there was anything else in there, any other contaminant or anything, it would be in that wastewater. When they take it out with all the RO, what do they do with it? Because if you dumped it on the ground, it would permeate through the system and you had that back up with a higher concentration. Well, hopefully you don't dump it close enough to your well. Mm -hmm. But yes, you well, are you correct. You just the problem. Yeah, in a way, yes. Okay. But, excuse me, I've got a cold tonight. <laughs> what KDHE looks at it like is, like if you're going to put it into a stream, it will dilute it enough that the water going down the stream is below the limit for anything, and so it's not a problem. For cattle or, yes. or yeah. agricultural use or whatever. Yes, yes. Somebody else have a question? What about the individual when they get in your home? They work fine. So how many gallons do you have to run through to get one gallon of useful water? I have a friend that has one, and he says he runs five gallons through it to get one gallon of water out. Now, if all you're talking is the kitchen sink, Correct. Well, maybe you use five gallons a day, so you waste four. Well, that's a high percentage, but it's not a lot of water. Okay, what happens that water goes back down it just to the goes, sewer, then where does it? It just goes into your sewer system. It just it goes out to, the, to your sewer pond. But the only thing nitrates hurts is for consumption, right? Really, yes. Yeah. Yeah, or in abortion. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, for adults, it's not even that and much. And for, for adults, right? it's really not, you know, I hate to say that because as soon as I say it, somebody will have a problem. But that's all the research says, that it's really babies. Now, if you get up into, and I'm not sure where the the problem starts, but if you get up into the 40 and 50 parts of the nitrates, then it's going to start having an effect. And it will have a, a high enough nitrate concentration will have an effect on, on livestock. Even. But we don't see that around here. Yeah. Long term, wouldn't it still have an effect anyway? It's a cumulative, correct? Pardon? It's a cumulative. As near as I understand it, it is not. But I am not an expert on nitrates and... But yes, I would think that if you drank, if you just continuously drank high nitrate water, at some point in time, it would have an effect. Oh no, I mean in the, in the soil. It would be accumulated in the soil it because there would be no natural process to remove it. Well, it depends on the soil, for one thing. But that's what, you know, I mean, Fertilizers, what everybody, you know, nitrates are the primary ingredient in fertilizer that farmers use for, for growing crops. And that's how the nitrate is taken out of the soil. My opinion is that where a lot of these nitrates are coming from is 40, 50 years ago when irrigation was just coming into being, fertilizer was cheap. And if 100 units of nitrogen an acre was great, 150 would be a little bit better. And so that people just kept putting on because it was it, it resulted in higher yields. Well, nowadays, everybody's beginning to understand the side effects or the effects of nitrogen. Nitrates cost a whole lot more. People are doing a lot better job of balancing what can be used by the crop versus where it, uh, you know what they put on, and it's being a lot better balanced. I think that. And at some point in time, and it may be 50 years from now, we will work through these nitrates. Yeah, because I think that what's applying that, you know, feedlot runoff is being much better taken care of 
fertilizer is, is being much more better, much better utilized and, and, and watch the rates and everything. That's just my opinion. Uh, sure. Yeah, I don't know, plan on being here to find out. What was the parts per mill before 1974? I believe it was 20. I believe you're right. Yeah. And just as a, to throw this out, there is a talk of lowering the limit to five. I don't see it happening in the, few, in the near I future. I thought I heard talk that there was actually going to go up to 15. <laughs> Yes, yes, and, and I don't think it's going to happen simply because of the cost. You know, there's a lot of towns that are in the, the five to ten range that are going fine now. But if they start making everybody treat for it, it would be a tremendous cost, and I just don't believe people would stand for it. And, and at this point in time, there's no research to say there's really a problem. The electrolysis process, is that such a new technology that there's no data on it? Or, or you know, it's been used in Europe, but around in the United States, I've, I've looked and I have not been able to find anything on it, and I honestly don't know anything about it. I just, I know it's listed as an EPA available technology, but I don't know anything about it. Is that something we should be, we should look at? Is it? Based on the what well, little research I've done, no. They say it's it's a you know, a very intent it, it works on electricity and it takes a lot of power to make it work. So that's that make it too expensive or? Yeah, yeah, that makes it very expensive to operate. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Yes, I have one question. Okay. We put in the reverse osmosis. We take out the impurities of water and dump it down the sewer or down the stream. This is concentrate going in there. Yes. Ain't that going to be an end result that we're going to have a bigger problem later on? Well, <laughs> yes. Um, what about a sewer plant? Again, it, it, it operates on the same process and somewhat process of the sewer plant is that you're trying to dilute it. You, know, you can't, you put that RO wastewater into something that has enough flow that it dilutes it. Uh, and, and, but yes, if it was going, if that RO stream was concentrate, was going by somebody else's water well, it would have the possibility. So aren't we just taking our problem and sending it up downstream? Somewhat, yes. And, you know, that's one thing about what we are doing here does not do that. Where does it go? Okay, I'll, I'll get to that here in a second, but, but we're going to put in, well, we have two options. Um, Bobby has a disposal well, an oil field disposal well here, east of, right on the east side of, of town that we're looking at and you know, still debating with, arguing with KDHE on whether we can do that or not. <coughs> the, uh, the other option is what I've done at all the other plants is we put in a double lined lagoon pond system. <coughs> and I'll, I've got pictures of that and uh, the liners, I get some liner samples here that anybody can look at later on. So you store it rather than get rid of it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because of the shallow depths that we're looking at, have we investigated bioremediation at all? Uh, no. KDHE, right now, KDHE will not even talk to you about that. Why? Kansas is very conservative. And like Iowa, they'll, 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 let, you dump, they'll let you put your back, <laughs> back wash into the ditch. Oklahoma, you can go to your sewer system with it. Kansas will not let you do that. Well, I'm, ta I'm talking bioremediation in as much as there are certain plants that you can put in around the wells which will uh, absorb the nitrates and purify the water on its oh, way okay. to the okay, well. Okay. Uh, probably is, but it's going to take 
many years. And, and if your water is deep, I don't know that your plants will go down that deep to do that. Yeah, our, our water that we're talking about here is fairly shallow. Other than the, the deep that you're talking about out right. at the new area, yes. most of it that we're talking about is within 50 feet of the surface. And there's a tremendous number of trees that will pick up that, that nitrogen and clean it on the, the water on the way to the well and create a, an absolute barrier. But um, that's not going to happen in, in a time frame that will allow you to meet the regulations, I don't think. Okay, could we get Don to move forward a little bit and go and then try to keep your questions towards the end, please, or at the end? Yes, Mary. Just real quick, what you just said, you, you said Bobby has a well. We're talking about Bobby, a member of the city council, yes. has a well. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. This is your perception. This isn't a deal. It's going to go through no matter what. What did you say? I mean, it's sounding like it's going to happen. I thought we were here to find out if it's something we wanted to happen. Do we have no choice at all? Well, we definitely have to do something. Well, whether we put a nitrate plant in or whether we just pump from a new well. But he was talking about Belfry. Do you all want to be in the same situation no, as no, Belfry? You're, you're going ahead and you're jumping up. I'm well, just asking, has this been voted on to put in? As of right now, no. Okay, then we're here to listen. Yes. Okay, and so is the council. Yes. There hasn't been any? <clears throat> no, we have not. We have he's not. He's talking like, well, we could do this to Bobby, and, and we've got this, and I'm thinking, These are wait just, a minute. But he's, he's throwing everything out there. We okay. don't want to hide anything from anybody. Yeah, okay. I'm just telling you things that we have looked at. Okay, that's all I want to know. You made it sound like... It's going in. That's it. Oh, well, so, I'm well, sorry. We, oh, we yeah. hope something's going on. <coughs> What's How our far out of the city limits can we read in for more water? I'm sorry, what? How far out of the city limits can we read for good water? You can go as, as far as you can afford. All right. You know, if you there's, found... There's other options to freight water then beyond our city limits. Yes, yes. But you have to, again, you have to remember that... The farther you go, the more it costs you to pump it, the more pipe, pipe you have to lay, and that it doesn't take you very far to reach a break-even point. And like they say, that's exactly what Belpre did, and in less than you know, less than ten years, that new well was no longer used. Don, you also have to remember if there are water rights available also. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's the other thing is water rights. Uh, if you can afford, cities can reach out far as they would, so can they not legally for their water? It's, I mean, if, if a water right is available, but if there's not a water right available, well, I don't know that I would want to go through condemnation on a water right. I don't think that would be very pretty at all. And this area here, how we're how we're doing what we're doing now is that we're not getting new water rights. We are staying within a half a mile of your east well. Uh, if you look, I've got a map up here, and there's a circle on here. It's a half a mile from the east well, and we're staying within that half a mile of that new well, or the east well, and so we're just reusing your, your existing water. To put in the new well. Yes, to put in the new well. Do you realize your new well is going to be within a half a mile of a feedlot that's been sitting there for 30 years and a disposal well? And underground gas. Downgrading. Do what? Are you talking about? Up, up yeah, if it's going in where you guys are talking. That's down gradient of the water. I know, it, I know the way the natural flow goes, but it's still within a half a mile. I mean, who's to say it can't leach back partway that way before it does take off and go to the northeast? And, and, and that's one of the reasons that my recommendation put in a treatment point is because I can't, I will not make any guarantee that if you drill these new wells that one year, five, ten years from now, that they're still going to be at two parts on, per million on nitrate. But, you said yourself, if you can buy ten bottles of water and eight of them are contaminated, it does not seem like it's much of an ongoing concern. It, it, maybe the city would be better off to supply those two bottles of water 
Well, he didn't say contaminated with nitrate. Yeah, yeah, he did too. He didn't say contaminated with what? Well, oh, I thought, yeah. yeah. He, uh, no. no, I didn't say contaminated either. All I said was that they don't need the same standard. Right, okay, so they don't, right. But that's what I'm saying. Maybe the city would be better off to buy 3,000 cases of water to give to people who have six month old kids. Haviland has done that. Okay. Isn't the EPA you want to only allow a short period of time to do that, though. The EPA, uh, which the Kansas Department of Health and Environment has basically adopted every EPA regulation, and uh, with the bottle of water, and the regulation says they have a bottle of water regulation, and it says a short period of time. Now they don't state that period of time, but it is specific to a short period. And, and, and when that period is up, KDHE has the authority and they will come in and they will start finding it. Yeah, the objective is not to skirt around it. They want you to provide drinking water to meet their standard. Okay? I'll wake this thing up here. Citizens, I will add too that we started looking into this probably. <coughs> Jim, two years ago, and we put it on the back burner. Council didn't want to have anything to do with it. They said, no, nope, don't want to have anything to do with it. We'll shut that well down. We'll check in a few months and see what happens. Well, here we are again. Lots more money than what it would have cost two years ago. So we have <coughs> been on this since April, okay, when they shut us down. We have been on this since April. Because we was also told, too, that if we don't do something, we all make, might get thrown in jail. Well, guess what? I don't want to be behind bars at all. So, we have been studying this since April, so this is what we have come up with. So, if you're wondering why... So, it's a demand that the city total water has to be... Made we, usable. We have to do something. Yes. We can't do or like Don said, we will be fine. We can't do it individualized. Okay. Because yeah. I can put something in my kitchen for 200 bucks and I've got my water okay. All I want to do is have healthy drinking water. I don't have to bathe in healthy water. I don't have to water my flowers with healthy water. Why pay the big expense and put this over our heads Okay. $200 will take care of my problem. Okay, your $200, I have no idea what system you're talking about, but say a young family moves into town and they put that same system on their, in their house, and all of a sudden they have nitrates, whose problem is it? Does it fall back onto the city? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, if, yes, it would there is a couple that. of places in the state that have done what you're talking about. They're very small towns. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is Glade, mm -hmm. south of Phillipsburg. <coughs> and it's like a 50. Is it, is it even that big? Yeah, the problem with that is number one is the city has to buy each unit. You can't buy it yourself. The city has to buy it. Even if you've got one installed, the city has to replace it. Then the city is responsible for maintaining it. And the city is responsible for testing. Like, what happens if your unit goes bad? Now, is that all federal regulated? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's all I need to know. Yeah, that's state EPA is, is saying that. Like I say, there's, there's been several places that have tried this. You know, like, what do you do at a, a drinking fountain at the school? Uh, what's, the, what's the cost per unit for, to do something like that? Well, and you're saying $200. That's, well, I went on the internet, and I can get one, and I can hire a, a plumber to put it in, and I've got it. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, 200 seems awful cheap to me. Uh, that's, that's, are there any cities being fined now? Uh, Havlin is... Not, not that I know of. No, but no, no council members are in jail yet that you know of. Not that I know of. <laughs> Havlin, Pretty Prairie, has absolutely been a thorn in the state side. They, the state... Doesn't even deal with pretty brain. See, you don't know me, but I'm all for bucking the rule because I don't go by the rules on everything. <laughs> 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 what everybody tells me, I have to. 
I just do take my chances, see what happens, and then play it from there. But, like I said, if nobody's been fined, nobody's in jail, you know. The has been fined in the past, and actually the state mandated probably 15 years ago that they drill a well and they had to have it down within 30 days, and it was not a cheap answer for those residents at Green Prairie. And that. So, yes, they have fined the city, and yes, they put a mandate on them to complete it, and they didn't care what the cost was. All right, but so they can't afford it, then what do they do? How do they make them do that if you can't afford to do that? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I mean, that's my question. How do you afford it if you can't afford it? The other thing, it looks to me like, if you go back to the original reverse osmosis question, it's 200 or 400 bucks. The city could hire somebody full time to maintain them, and it's still going to be way cheaper than three million dollars. Um, I, I I don't have a, a good answer for you at this point in time. The state is really discouraging doing that. Well, I'm um, sure the state discourages anything. Okay. Yes, Julia. Has there been any kind of cost analysis done? on the different options available? And yes. are they available to the public? Yes. I, as far as I know, you have the right to look at them. We don't have, you mean the rate study? The rate study? Yeah. Okay, when, when, I say, when I say cost analysis, what I'm talking about is a, an analysis that's been done to compare reverse osmosis and taking some of the things that people have been talking about. Hiring somebody full-time to maintain the system, the cost of the systems. If you go and buy 800 or 1200 systems, however many meter accounts we have in town, you're going to get a huge discount because you're going to be buying in bulk. You're going to get a discount on filters for those systems because, again, you'll be buying in bulk. Compared to the $3.1 million loan, I realize that sounds like a huge amount of money, but I don't, and I'm not sure how many meter accounts we have in town, but if we had 1200 meters in town, that's less than $3,000 a household. That's not a lot of money. Oh, 450. Well, approximately 450 meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me just say something. Um, as a council, we I feel like we are between a rock and a hard place. We want to do what's best for the community, and we don't want to put a lot of added cost on anyone. But we have hired Don as an engineer and his firm to to work with us on this. And I think before we start really digging into this, we have to get through this presentation for you to understand where we're at. And I don't want to discourage anyone from asking questions, but I really would like for <coughs> you to hear Don. And we've almost been here 40 minutes and we haven't got through the slideshow yet. I completely agree with you, but maybe we should have had this meeting before you hire someone. Well, we couldn't move forward without understanding what it was we had to do. We should all maybe learn that together, understand it together. I mean, it's well, just not our fault that you guys chose to hire someone to do this. And also, but I completely understand your point. I'm just no, saying. I, you're you're also assuming that all of us don't understand. Some of us do understand. And have a lot of I didn't need to open up a can of worms, okay. guys. I just want like to the order the presentation you know, to go on. So. I understand that. All I'm trying to wait a minute. <laughs> I want to let you know, and I've said this many a times, that anybody in the city of St. John is welcome to our council meetings. Anybody was welcome to go to Belfry or to Lewis. We put it out there. We didn't know how big of a bus we was going to need or if people wanted to follow us <coughs> out there to look at this. When did you put it out there? Because this is the first time I've ever heard of it. Yeah, it was in April. It, it was, was in April. April. Yes, it was It was okay. welcome to anybody. Here's part of my problem. If you go to the city's website to look at the minutes. Now, when I check okay, tonight. Wait a minute. I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. We're, we're starting on some total different subject right now. But it's notification is what I'm getting at, Jill. We use and, the and paper. I understand. The paper is the official notification. Okay, but what if we don't take the paper? Then you need to come to the council or come to the city office right now. Don, will you please move forward? Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm swallowing the update. About 30 minutes ago, you said somebody mentioned that they had a waste disposal, this disposal well out here. Correct. 
aren't we putting stuff down that thing right now that's polluting our water? No. What's it going to do when you put this wastewater down in that well? Isn't it going to spread? No. Uh, no because that is the limit to sensibility. That, that's not even good science. In Wichita and all of our municipalities clean their wastewater and recharge the aquifer of their wells, basically. And, and we're going to, with the precipitation we've had in the past year and the forecasts for the next year are the same, and it's probably going to be that on forward, we need to buck up, pay what for, for what you want to do. We also need to pay to clean our wastewater as well as we can and what we can afford for now, recharge the aquifer and the wells with that wastewater. We need to be good stewards for the people now and for the children to come. You know, we, I want to fix the income. When I got my water bill in July, I was upset, but I used the water, and after that, I became more conservative. When I took a bath, I didn't let the water out. I used that water to water my garden. And I have difficulty getting around. But I carried it out a gallon at a time in water. We've all been too free with our medical resources. And it's going to hurt me and the elderly and other people in this town hard. But we need to do what we need to do to make it right for ourselves and for future generations. And I don't care if I make anybody in town mad at me, that's the right thing to do. And as far as you taking a bath or washing yourself and it not the nitrate's not affecting you, that is faulty science. Your skin on your body is a permeable membrane. If you sit in the tub for longer than two minutes, you're absorbing nitrates. Okay, Mark, we'll move forward. Okay. Yes, sir. If you'll see me after the meeting, I'll, I'll talk to you about disposal well. Okay. This is a graph of the nitrates at Belfry. Uh, you can see that the, the purple on top here, that's their west well, that's the new well that they drilled. And this is real typical to see big drops in nitrates and then see big swings back up. Now, if we had the next point on this side, it's up here. The next time we tested that well, it was 17. This well here is the well in the park that they normally use, and it was about 8. The next time we tested it, it was at 11. At Goodland, I'm going to show you some slides of Goodland here in a minute. We were going to look at doing a blending plant in Goodland. They had two big wells that were 6s and 7s on nitrates. In a six-month period, they went up three points to where blending was no longer an option. So that's one of the things that you have to, to be aware of. Okay. This is, this is the, an ion exchange unit that we've been talking about. If, if you have a water softener in your home, it's very similar to a water softener. The water goes in, comes in as raw water, it's, it can, it, and you have a blending valve that you can bypass part of the water, you don't have to treat it all. You have to have a minimum of two tanks, KHE says that. You have to have what you call N plus one. If it takes one vessel to treat the water, you have to have an extra vessel so that when it backwashes, you'll always have one vessel in service. Okay? Again, this is, this is a system similar to, to what Lane Christensen puts out. Uh, there's a brine tank, just again, just exactly like what you have with water supper. That has salt water in it. The salt you backwash through the media, and the salt takes the nitrates out and carries it out as a waste stream. They have a recycle tank that they, that they, part of the water is recycled and, that, and the reason that's done is to cut down on the amount of wasted water. Then the, the waste tank is where the high salt content and high nitrate content water goes to. And then from there, that's, that goes to the waste. What we've been talking about here is a double line lagoon. Okay, or to a disposal well. Okay. This is the plant at Belfry. Their well was there. They had the one well is inside the building. That's in, in their park. The old building was falling down, so they needed a new building as well. And so we just built the new building around that existing well 
and the, the, the tanks are inside the building. Okay, these Belfry has two tanks. Uh, either one will treat the flow from either well, and uh, and so it, it alternates. One, one tank is in service, then the other tank. And the piping is set up. We have valves that you can control. You know, if you have to take one tank out to work under something, you can do that. But it has automatic controls up on top. It, there's a flow meter that uh, measures the flow through each vessel, and and you. We calculate how much nitrates in the water, and we set the flow through the vessel to where you have a safety factor so that it will backwash before you have any danger of <coughs> overloading the media. This is just more of the piping. This is the line that goes down to their distribution system. There is uh, the flow meters right there. Not real hard to see the behind the valve handles. There's, those are the flow meters for each vessel. Now one thing that Belpre does is they use liquid chlorine as opposed to gas chlorine. Um, I see, I'm starting to see this in a lot of small systems, systems that don't have real experienced operators are going to liquid chlorine because it's uh, safer. Costs a little more. What he uses is Clorox. He goes to Walmart every week and buys a case of Clorox and that's what they use to disinfect the water. Perfectly legal. It's, it's NSF. No, no. It's approved for drinking water. It's real simple, real safe. Okay. This is the backwash lagoon that we put in for Valkyrie. Again, it has two liners. <coughs> it has a bottom one, and there's a leak collection system that sets in this one. Then there is a layer. Uh, uh, this type of membrane, geotech, geogrid fabric we call it, that goes in between, and then there's another layer that goes on top. So if the top layer leaks, which is tested, but if, in case it leaks, it will go through, the geomembrane will, will transmit it, and the bottom layer will catch it and transfer it to a leak collection system, and then it, from there it's pumped back into the pond. So the objective is that there will, if, even if it does leak, that there will never be anything get back into your groundwater. And this is what KDHE is requiring us to do. How much of waste do you have with this? When you're pumping and you're collecting it back off into waste, how much waste water are you going to have in comparison? I'm, I, I'm not following it. it all it's doing is recycle. If there's anything that leaks, it just recycles it back. It never leaves the system. Is that is that on your other diagram? You have your your oh oh okay percentage of waste. waste. Okay, Belpre was that was sold it to us as being a two percent system. Okay, Goodland is a Lane Christensen system and it's a 06 percent. Okay, we have not made any decision here at all on what system we would use. Uh, we're we're looking at the lane system. Um, it's almost like apples and oranges. <coughs> the systems are really different, although they do the same thing. But still, uh, I always change. But yeah, Belpre has, and, and once we've gotten into operation, it's about one and a half percent is what we're we're using. How much does my case take out of the system? The last time I tested it, it was taking it from 11 down to 4. That's unblended. Yes, yes, that's what goes through the treatment unit. And, and I have it set up that, it, uh, that we're, we're bypassing approximately 60% of Valkyrie. So that the blended comes out of about 7 parts of nitrogen. And that's my goal. I, that's one of the goals that I established way back when I started on this. Is that I want to have a little bit of safety room in case a, a well spikes or something or something doesn't quite go the way I think it's going to. I don't want to be treating, shooting for that 9.5. I want to have some safety in there. So that's that's what seven is where I shoot for. Is there enough leeway that if the state does lower the requirement that that the system would still be adequate? It will take it down. You may not have the flow capacity that you need. And after Belpre, 
all the buildings, all the ones I put up, I, I'm allowing extra <coughs> in the building. So if you ever do have to put more capacity in, all you have to do is put the tanks in and go. You're not building a whole new building. When you get to Goodlands, you'll see that. Goodlands is a real good example of this. Okay. This is how we seal. The pipe comes in. It's sealed off with stainless steel bands and, uh, and so that it doesn't leak around the pipe. This is the guy seaming it. And each one of these seams in this they have a double roller. I you probably really have to see, but there's a, a space between where the, the, the layers are melted together. And when they're done, they go around and they stick a needle in and they pressure test every seam in that on both layers of this <coughs> liner. You know, we want to make sure that this doesn't leak. So that's what that's what this is. This is the machine that puts in puts down the double the double seams. This is Lewis. And uh, Lewis has three wells. And I don't know if you're familiar, but anyway, they have well, well in a park that was, it was 17, 18 on nitrates four or five years ago. They completely disconnected it from the system even. And, and then they were well over west by the school, and in the last couple of years, that had gone over the limit. So they were down to only having one well that they could use. And uh, so that's what they, they would, would put this in because they just didn't feel safe with one well, which they weren't. Uh, they had an existing shop that's, that ended about right there. And what we did is we added on to that existing building and put the treatment unit in there. This salt, this is a bulk salt tank. Lewis is a large enough, larger than Belpre that they, they use quite a bit more salt. And this, so this is, they bring it in by the semi. It br blows it in there. There's, there's a water level in the bottom that keeps a brine in the bottom, and then that's what's used. Belpre is small enough that they buy salt in the bags. You're going to be big enough that if we do this, you'll have a bulk salt system. Maybe like this, maybe like this. We'll see. I'll show you. So there'd be an annual cost for the salt on Yes, there is. Yes, there. And that varies. Belpre costs about 20 cents a thousand gallons to treat, just for the treatment cost itself. Okay? And so, yes, there is an additional treatment cost to it. And, and the salt's used to clean the filtering system? It's, it, what it does is the, the media in the, the, the tanks is, it's called a selective media. As the water goes by it, the nitrate ions stick to the media and it bumps chloride ions on the media, bumps it off and the chlorides go on. When you backwash, what you do is you backwash with salt water and it sends it just literally backwards. The salt knocks off those nitrates and they go to your waste system and the chloride ions stick on again. And it's just a reversible circuit. What kind of a salt index are we going to induce in the water by doing that? It's real, real low. With water softeners. Pardon? With water softeners. It's the same complaint because you, you induce water in or salt. This is a system. much, much, much lower than a water softener. Uh, it's approximately, if I remember, I've right, got one twentieth of what the limit is on salt, on chloride. What year did you put these two plants in? Oh boy. <laughs> It's been, I'm going to say, Belfry has been in operation three years, two years, and Lewis is about two years. I think Belfry is three years and Lewis is two years, and Goodland has been less than a year. Do you have any that are further back? There was two plants put in approximately 20 years ago. But Downs and Lucas in north central Kansas. They're ion exchange and but it's an older, real older style technology. But it's still it's still ion exchange. Uh, but yes. Ion exchange has been real well accepted, documented that it works well for taking nitrates out. 
This is Chad Nystrom. He was the operator uh, for Lewis, and he built this plant. Uh, other than we, we hired the building built, but Chad did uh, a lot of the work himself. It took him over three years to do this, and it put the city in several binds. One, he, he didn't get his normal work done, and because they had the second well that got over the limits on nitrates, they pumped all their water out of one well, and they way over pumped their one well. They were over their limit on, on their water rights. But, but Chad did do it, and like I say, it took him over about three years to do this plant. This, 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 this is the same type of equipment as what Valkyrie has. Uh, it's just that you can't see if there's four vessels in the Lewis uh, system instead of two that Valkyrie has. And the reason being is that Lewis can treat 500 gallons a minute and Valkyrie can only treat about 160 gallons a minute. But uh, again, you have, you have a separate line that goes into and out of each vessel. The controls up on top keep track of how much water has been through each vessel and, uh, and it controls the vacuum. The, one of the things that I really like about these systems is that they are real low maintenance once they're in place. You know, I don't imagine these guys spend 15 minutes a day. How large? The what you guys want would be a four tank system? Or, or how many uh, gallons will we treat? I mean, we, have, we have not got that oh, far. Okay. We've talked about it and it's changed because of this summer. Your, your water use took a big jump this summer, and so we're going to have to relook at that. We, we have not set a number yet. Again, this is just uh, uh, the, the end vessels. It's kind of tough to see, but there's, there's a pipe here and a pipe on the back side. This is the, this is the untreated pipe. And there's a valve right there, and if he wants to open more up to where he can be, treats less, he just opens that valve up, lets more untreated go by, and then the treated comes in and mixes it. You know, you, he has, the operator has control over how much is blended, or how much is bypassed, and how much is treated. <coughs> you do that to control your costs. Obviously, the more you treat, the higher percentage you treat, the higher your cost is going to be. This is the, uh, the, uh, the pond for for Lewis. Question on this again. Do those have to be cleaned out every so often? Wouldn't you get a high concentrate even of evaporation? You do. You do. Because these ponds have to be evaporative. Uh, have to be evaporative. They're sized that <coughs> you, won't, you can't ever pump out of it. What the plan is that at some point in the future, and it's going to, because nitrates will evaporate somewhat, um, is that when you start sampling this and you say, okay, this is high enough, what you do is, is there's a valve that you can switch to the other pond. You shut, one, shut all inflow into one pond and let it just evaporate, dry up, okay? And then you clean it out. <coughs> and, then you clean it out. Yeah. And, and there are landfills that will take that. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be 40 years plus before that happens. But, uh, does it stuff burn? Pardon? Does it burn? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. They, this is, it's not sewage, and so it does not smell at all. It's just water. You can still drink it. No. Yeah. <laughs> you can drink it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, in a way, what he's saying is correct. Is that you know we haven't added anything to it. You know we haven't added formaldehyde or cyanide or anything. Well, we can't fill the swimming pool with it. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's got the nitrates are more concentrated. They're going to be a higher level than what you've got. Now. But either, yeah, it's it's nothing really terrible or anything. No. Well, you want to know what's in it? It's half. Sodium nitrate, that's salt beer, and the other 50% is metallic nitrates, and you can't drink it. Well, or put it in the aquifer or on the ground. On the yeah. Charcoal and salt. No, you make them yeah. <laughs> That's why we put it in these ponds. Okay. This is the Goodland plant. Like I said when we started out, Goodland, 
you, we were not going to put a nitrate removal plant in. We were going to put a blending plant in. In fact, that's what we applied for funding on first, was just blending. But in a six month period, your two biggest wells took a huge jump on nitrates where that wasn't an option. What we've done, I'll show you a picture in a minute, but you see the three doors? That means there's, there can be a skid behind each door. But for the, the time being, there's only one treatment skid in there. They said, one treatment skid will treat the water for what we have our nitrate level is right now. In the future, if the nitrate levels go up, we'll just open the door and slide another skid in there. The piping is blind flanged. All we have to do is take flanges off, put the piping up, and go. And you know, now is the time to build a bit bigger building if you're going to do it. So that's that's what this is. Uh, the other thing, these are ground storage tanks. Um, the wells do not have enough pressure, enough head to pump all the way from the well through the treatment unit back and still be able to fill the tower. Belfry and Lewis can do it because of the type of system they put in. Uh, you can't, they can't pump the quantity that they could before, but they can still fill the tower. So that was put in. So, so Goodland, we put in the ground storage tanks and then booster pumps to boost the pressure back up. This is a prefabricated skid by Lane Christensen. It came, it came just like you see it. There's a, there's a, a pipe connection on that. I think there was three connections on it, and oh, slid it in the door and connect it up and you go. Like I say, if at some point in time in the future, if their nitrate levels go higher, all we have to do is open the door, slide another skid in, pipe it up and go. Uh, right now they're they're bypassing approximately 75% of their water, sometimes even up to 90% of their water, depending on, Goodland has 12 wells, and depending on which well's running, they, they can bypass more or less. And this is just the, the storage tanks. These are stainless steel tanks. Uh, it was the first stainless steel water tank in the state of Kansas. These are the, the booster pumps. Each one of these pumps will pump 1,650 gallons a minute. It's set up to where two pumps at a time is all it can run. And it rotates. Um, how much did that plant cost? About two million dollars. Now, what you got to realize is that you have to bring all of the water from your wells to the treatment plant without a uh, without any services on it. And so, we spent two, a little over two million dollars bringing the water to the plant and then getting it out of the plant. You know, where now it goes into the system, or before it went into the system in twelve different places. Now it's all coming out of you know, this pipe right here is where all the water goes out, so we have to get it back into the distribution system. So are you saying the total cost of the project was $4 million? It was almost $5 million okay. for the total, with everything that good, yes. Okay. I visited with the city clerk there today, and she said it's coming in around $6 million by the time they get everything set up. Okay. Oh, yeah, Goodland. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. yes. Like yeah, Goodland. If all three skids were in, they could treat 3,300 gallons a minute. And, and I doubt that you'll be a third of that. Does our 3.1 million, does that include the hookup from well to well to the treatment plant and back to the tower and everything? Yes. I showed that map. Maybe. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, yes. That's, that includes everything. Yes. 3 yes. Yes. But, but yet you don't know whether we're a two tank, four tank, six tank. You still can figure that without knowing that. Yeah, I've done enough of these that you know I can I can get pretty close. Has anybody yes. seen the actual breakdown of cost? Yeah, I mean the, the, yes. the, the detailed breakdown of cost. Has anybody yes. seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean here. Oh, the rest of us. I mean, I mean yeah. I, I'm saving my questions. I had plenty of questions, which a lot of them I've already answered, but um, just about. Uh, 
Yes, Jonathan. Well, the actual project hasn't been left to bid yet. So yeah. until you actually put bids out to get the work done, you're really not going to know exactly what your actual costs are going to be. That's right. And this is just my estimate. And if I tell you, I think it's going to cost ten million dollars, and the bids come in at two million. The two million is what you pay. My estimate doesn't have any effect on it. It's it will be bid out. And this is Goodlands Goodlands Ponds. Uh, I build the ponds to the point if you have to treat all of your water, I don't want to be coming back in and adding another pond in. So when the when these plants are starting out. The ponds are going to be oversized, but when you, if the nitrates go up like they have in the past, then the ponds will be able to take, to take care of it. Now, any questions? <laughs> now, I will say this. You have three minutes. You have three minutes to ask your question. Don will get it answered, okay? Please. That's what I ask. Yes, and if you would please stand up so everyone can hear your question. Say who you are. Terry would ask, Terry would like to know. One can Clark, and I'd like to ask: if, Are we still pumping water out to the uh, for free out to the rest area on the highway? It never has been free. free. <laughs> We're still pumping water. Yeah, but it's not free. It's meter. <laughs> what are we going to do with that? He's telling us. Give them water. And I, I, there would be no reason not to. I mean, you if you're selling the water, there's customers right there. We've got a meter and they pay a bill just like everyone. I'm going to go on the not working on it. So, Adam Sailor, I just want to know will the city have to hire additional employees to run the water? Should not. Should not. Like I say, uh, Richard Goodland, I think he spends an hour out there, but that's his good away point. Uh, yeah, I don't think it takes 15 minutes a day to operate. Once you get them up and going, get all the buttons worked out of them, I don't think it takes hardly any time at all to operate. Louis <laughs> okay. uh, uh There's a difference between storing the waste from the system and getting rid of it. And uh, yes. the gentleman that left was talking about stewardship of the land. And we don't want this stuff on, on the ground or whatever. Uh, Garden City put in their plant. They estimated they had to drill a disposal well. Right. Uh, they had that choice, or a class one abandoned well that's a mile deep with zero head pressure. So uh, Garden City drilled the well. It cost one point two million dollars. Well, actually, that was the estimate. It cost three million dollars for the well, okay. and, that, and that's a safe way to handle it below the aquifer. Right. And don't put it in the Rattleshell Creek, please. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a lot of environmentalists who really don't like the deep well solution because once that water is pumped into a deep well, it's gone forever. You know, what we put into these ponds, it's evaporated off and recycled. You, know, you don't lose that water forever. It's, it's still going to be able to be recycled and reused. That's why a lot of people don't like putting it into a deep well. But yeah, you're right. And that's what what we have is a deep well. I mean, that's why I say it's it would be safe to do it. Uh, but uh, we haven't gotten that far. We haven't made any decision yet or that. It's just something we've talked about. John Roth, I was wondering if the wells we have have enough head to push water through the treatment system and still fill the tower. Are we going to need repump? I am figuring that it will need repump. Are we going to get the tower fixed out of this deal? Where we can use the whole tower instead of just half of it? <laughs> Once upon a time, a few years ago, there was a water study done here when they replaced a lot of the pipelines that said the top of the tower leaked, so we were only using about half of it to fill and control. I've, I've been here 15 years and we used the upper part of the tower. We have a tank maintenance crew that comes out and checks the tower and we just got so to. So it gets completely full. And within reason, we don't push the upper limit. And we've got, you know, Yeah, that's closer to like 10 feet or something. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, that's like I say, I've never heard that issue at all. Okay, well. I thought somewhere so. I had never heard of it, so I had My name's Jerry Munden. 
I want, and I know you must be the lady with the money, um, <laughs> but I see that that's after the question. So I guess what I'd like to know is how the, how we're going to plan on paying for it, guys. And then if we do, I mean, I know you've got something figured out, but it sounds like we're going to have to buy a semi and another truck driver to haul salt back and forth to Hutch to service it. No, no, you don't buy it. You won't buy it to solid Hutch. It's real picky. Uh, there's a plant in Cook, Nebraska built a plant. And they just bought rock salt from road salt. They bought, and they have a big pit. They had 12 semi loads. Had too much dirt in and plugged everything up. And then they had 10 semi loads that they had to give away. We buy food grade salt. It's what's called solar salt. It's mined with water, evaporated off, and it's clean. And, uh, and that guy only hauls salt. So right, so we'll have to hire somebody to get a truck? Yes. How would we do yes. that? As, I mean, as part of it is, is Cargill has a plant, uh, has two plants, one in Chad, Oklahoma, and then one in southwest Kansas. And, and you call them and you say, okay, we need a semi load. And they just bring it, they blow it off, and you don't have to do anything. And in the wintertime, when the roads are bad and you ran out of salt and you need to run your treatment plant, what do you do when you have no salt? Well, you have enough. I mean, we have all kinds of emergencies like that in St. John. I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> the, the tank, the salt, the bulk tank has enough capacity to uphold about one and a quarter semis. And, semis. and so, you, you know, depending on your usage, you have a couple of weeks that you can say, okay, I'm getting down. I can hold a semi. I've got two weeks to get it ordered in. Now, the second part of my question how do we pay for it? Okay. No. How much does a semi load of salt cost? Oh gosh. I think she had told me it was four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars a load and how much how much salt are we gonna put through this treatment ink idea? I don't have that number with me. I like I say I it, it was gonna cost you about twenty cents per thousand gallons for salt and, and operating the plant. I can figure that out. I off top of my head, I just don't. Know. I never had heard any figures. Okay. I but yeah, that's about what. Now Lewis is a little more because they're treating a higher percentage of water. But that's about what it's worth. Thank you for that. Uh, Don, given the cost of laying the pipe so that you uh, have all of the uh, wells coming into a central plant, what if you just selected a couple of wells and put like a mini plant at the side of those wells and then you wouldn't have to have all the piping coming along. What would be the cost of something like that? We looked at doing that a good one. In fact, at one point in time we were going to put, I think, four plants in. And it came out to be not a lot, but more than one central plant. And, and the operator really didn't want it because that meant he had all these different places to go to. Now here you wouldn't have as many as what Goodman did, but uh, it Could just, we maybe get a, a kind, of, kind of a detailed breakdown of how what that would cost and what would be the advantages and disadvantages? Well, yeah, one of the disadvantages is that you now have those ponds at each location as well. And they still got to be interconnected. <coughs> Otherwise, you'd be beaten. You'd have to go to the source every time you get the water. It's still going to be piped into the system. Oh, it would be piped into the system, but this way you wouldn't have all of the wells having to be piped into the plant. Then you're talking about putting up a plant at every well. Yes, yeah, yes, that's what she's talking small about. Small plants at you? every well. And these plants are not, uh, I mean, they're not super sophisticated yes. plants. They're, I mean, you can right. saw the picture. Aren't you going to use the, the water that comes out of the plant though for planting? Well, you, what you'd have to do is, you, if, you know, if you put a treatment plant at each well, you would just, you would blend at each well, and you would be doing the same thing. It's just what you would be doing, you know. <coughs> in your case, you've got four wells. Uh, you know, if you want to put one at each well, the only advantage is that you eliminate all that plumbing, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And so your well can't sound any good any longer. I'm sorry, what? Would you have to have a lagoon at every one? Yes, you would have to have, you have, to have two lagoons at every one. Okay, let's back up a minute. Can we answer Jerry's question? Okay. Um, so the city had contracted with Branson Financial to do a, a rate study. And in that, what uh, uh, Beth at our office did was we took historical data from the city 
and figured out what the level of revenue was on and expenses were on your existing system without any improvements. And then they went ahead and did a scenario, but I believe the cost that they used was at 3.5 million. Is that right, Donna? I, I believe when I talked to Elizabeth today, she said it was actually they they were considering part of the loan forgiveness that was at right. 2.5. And, okay. Yeah. Is and and that was something I was going to get in. Well, this project was advertised at 3.1 million, and it is a little bit higher than than what Don has has uh, estimated at. Only because if our bids would happen to come in a little bit higher than his exact dollar value, then we would have to go through another public hearing and everything. So basically, KDH and he likes to work in round figures. So that's why it was rounded off to 3.1. Since this is a compliance issue, according to the intended use plan that the state of Kansas published, uh, there is a 30% loan forgiveness on the construction cost. And so based on, uh, I have 2.34 million uh, here uh, over a 20 year period. And if the city would happen to sign the loan agreement this month, the interest rate is 2.62%. That would, based, based on 680 users, that comes down to $18.61 a month. Now that does not mean your water rates will be raised $18.61 a month. What that means is that out of your uh, uh, monthly uh, charge, $18.61 is what is needed to retire the debt. Now the city has gone ahead Correct me if I'm wrong, you have gone ahead and reviewed the rate study because I'm not the person that did it. And I don't know if you went ahead and made a determination on increasing the rates and if you did what it was because I don't have a copy of it. Yes, we have, and I don't think I got my copy here. 17 dollars for the first 3,000 gallons. And then five, I believe 553, 20. 558, 3,000 gallons after that. Okay. The structure of the, the rate is still the same. Yes, that is Versus what? The prior. Well, we had every one. You had $5 for the first 3,000 gallons. And after that? It was for the next three thousand. It was a dollar sixty per thousand. Plus, there was an additional fee of six dollars. I know that everybody's thinking this is a high going to be a high water bill. You're still going to be one of the lowest water paying one of the lowest water bills in the state. The average is thirty three dollars and some cents. 5,000 gallons, and you're still going to be way less than that. Just that, that kind of adds into a question that I had. Um, I was told, I spoke with Jonna, it may have been two years ago by now, towards the very beginning of all this, um, and you said that the, on some of the loan programs or the grant programs, the state of Kansas said, you don't charge enough water or for your water, so we probably can't help you. So how does that figure into the forgiveness? Is that going to factor in? The, the, the forgiveness the is based on a compliance issue. It's not based on median household income or what your existing rates are right now. It is all due to... So they're just going to give it to us because we have to meet 10 parts. You have to bring your municipal water system into compliance according to EPA and KDHE rules and regulations. If you weren't having a compliance issue, you would be borrowing the entire amount. So is KDH and E has there is at least one, two, three, four, five, six. I know six systems on the what they call the project <coughs> priority list 
that are compliance issues, and every one of those entities will have that 30% loan forgiveness available to them on the construction costs and that. So, could I address what Nick was referring to? Go ahead. When we did start looking for funding on it, Nick, mm -hmm. there are other entities, and I, I don't want to say which ones they were because I don't have that information from them, mm -hmm. but some of them would say, if we're going to give you money, you have like to set grant, your rate at $42. You're going to have to bring your rate up to yes. the state average, yeah. which yes. is around 30 or something. Yeah. Right, it's 33, and, and, and I'll go ahead and state, there's basically, of course you have your geo bonds that the city could, or revenue bonds that the city could use to, to issue for this project. We have USDA rural development, some of you might remember them as the old Farmers Home Administration. And then there's another program out there called Community Development Block Grant through the Kansas Department of Commerce, which is a competitive uh, grant program. But the uh, USDA Rural Development will come into a community and say, if you are grant eligible, we are setting your water rates at this amount of money for 5,000 gallons, and if you are not charging that, then you will not get any grant funds. And that, that amount is between 40 and 41 dollars. Right. So, in looking at those scenarios, going with kdh &E, with the revolving loan program look to be the best option for, for the city to be able to put this in as a more cost effective solution. And that. The interest rate, like I said, if they signed it this month, it would be 2.62%. And the reason I'm saying it's this month is the interest rates that KDH and E sets is on a monthly basis, and it's 60% of the 90 day market. So, as we all know, interest rates over the market hasn't done very well over the last few months. So, since July 1, the interest rates have been falling. Now, once the city signs the loan agreement, they are locked in to that interest rate. It's a level interest rate for 20 years, a total of 40 payments. There is a provision in the loan agreement that if the city wishes to prepay part of that loan down, there is no penalty but they still stay at the same interest rate through the life of the loan. So what, happened, what would happen if we took out cash reserves somehow to pay off a larger portion? Is that going to drop our overall? If, if the amortization schedule would be refigured on the amount of the, the annual payment. Actually, it's a semi-annual payment. It's first figured on an annual payment but you pay the state twice a year, and that is on water. It is February, it's March and August, I believe it is. Without doing the figures, say 500, say going from 2.34, so you said 2.35, mm -hmm. down to 1.5, is that going to be a great deal of, of money? It's, it's something in the range of. $650,000 Let's interest? say what? Half pressure interest. Well, I mean, <coughs> interest approximately $600,000? Probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that really going to drop our interest all that much? It levels out your principal and interest payments over, over time so that if there happens to be a snag somewhere along the way, it's easier for the community to, to handle. Um, Honestly, truthful, I only know of a handful of communities that have actually prepaid it down. Uh, the interest rates uh, have been to where the communities just go ahead and pay it out. Also realize since this is a state-issued loan, it does not count against the city's debt capacity for issuing any other debt. So, like you would on a, a street project or a sewer project, if you issue geo bonds, that would count against the city's ability to issue debt. With this being a state-issued debt, it does not count against that debt capacity. So, so then to clarify, to pay for it, every meter in St. John's water meter, it's going to be about $20 a month more, give or take, for 20 years per meter. Is that the number of increase that you just we just got? Three thousand gallons. Probably about five thousand. Or five thousand. Yeah. 
Is that on top of the increase that we just got? No, that's, that, that, is, is, the that is, is the increase. Is the increase. Yeah, it is. That's with the ordinance that they just passed. There won't be another increase. There's no other increase to, to cover at, it. at this point, unless there's you know something else that we don't see here. Since Drew already got an increase for something that we have sold that for per meter for 20. You can get a great deal. And my role in this for the city is I'm actually always I'm helping the city complete the application to KDH and E. At this point, my services to the city are at no charge. Uh, I am being paid through a program through KDH and E to provide this technical assistance through loan agreement to to the city. So if you're sitting here thinking I'm charging the city for my time here, actually KDH and E is paying me to help the city out to alleviate this compliance issue based on information by our partners. Is the city council managing the well or is it privately managed? The well. What do you mean the well? The, the, the system. Plant? The system. The yes, plants. the city will. Yes. Okay. And it's because the city has a water permit issued through the state to run a municipal water system and everything having to do with the municipal water system is governed by the mayor and council, the governing body. What will it cost to train whomever to oversee the system? It's part of the... That's the... As part of buying the system, the training of the people is included in the cost of the system. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Nick. I think that a lot of questions might be answered if people could actually see the breakdown of cost, but understand that the breakdown of cost is, it could cost this much. Um, it includes the water lines, the, the, the building, um, but you're saying out over 3.1, that's the cap, Yes, right? that is, yes. Well, yeah, that's right. what we're applying yes. for. Yes. Yes. It could cost less, and yes. by the way you go more. out for, for um, bids, Joe Schmo down the street can bid on any part of the project he wants as long as he can meet. This is kind of a question I have. The city's requirements or the state's requirements? It's because the state's it's requirements. Water. Okay. And so they have, they have to be to bonded, be. and of course, I'm sure, I don't know this for sure, but I'm sure there, you would like to see some type of track record from the contractor yes. that has okay. done this. And to bring up the point is if we end up using, let's just say, 1.9 million at the tail end of this project, there will be, I will ask for a loan amendment to reduce the original loan agreement to what we actually use, and then there will be a new amortization figure. So there could be some changes in in the principal and interest payment that the city has to make based on actual cost at the end of the project. And then, yes, you've got a question over here. Okay. So. The rates have already been raised based on the 3.1 million. Is that correct? No, they will not be raised until January 1 of 2012. But you've already passed the ordinance. Yes, we yeah. have already passed the ordinance. Okay, and will the project be completed by January 1 of 2012? No. no. Okay, so then the rates have been established for January 1 of 2012 based on the anticipated $3.1 million cost of the project. Is that correct? Yes and no, but I will also say there was going to be raised no matter what. Okay. Yes. And have has has in this study have we looked at maintenance and operation costs? Um, I know that you said there isn't going to be any additional personnel, but I know we're looking at truckloads of salt. We're going to be looking at potential equipment failures. It happens. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff has that been factored into the rate increase that goes into effect January one? That I can't answer you. Well, so actually, as part of his engineering report that he has to submit to the state, you have to figure out and in a plan of operation to the state, they have to list 
anticipated operation and maintenance costs, and so that is factored in. So that's like part of the study that you did? Or no, you that know, the engineering firm will do, not that I did. Okay, so I that's part of the study or part of the package you put together for us. Yeah, I have not put it together yet, okay, but right. it will be, yeah. Right. Right. Do the best we were out, <laughs> they get used up? No, that I know of. I, you know, that uh, Belfry and Lewis, they're fiberglass, good when they're steel, and they're lined. Well, I mean, the, the semi permeable and permeable membrane inside. Okay, the, the membrane, yes, the membrane has to be replaced approximately every 10 to 15 years. And, and that cost will be included as, you know, as well. As the operating cost yes. over 20 years. Yes. Jill, so. this one I'm sorry, thank you. Um, I was curious, you said that the forgiveness is part of the construction cost, but what about loan fees? I'm sure there's got to be at least a point and a half or so in loan fees, your engineering Actually, fees, your cost of Well, yes, there's engineering costs, there's, there's inspection costs. Uh, the loan forgiveness is only on the construction cost. Is all that going to be 100% financed? Yes, yes. Okay. It'll be, yeah. We have no out-of-pocket. Well, no cash you can, no, you can. You know, if by raising your rates to the first of January, and depending on when we start this and when we get finished, you may have accumulated some money in your bank account, and it will be up to the city commissioner council to decide if they want to use that to prepay on that, pay that loan down, or if they want to say, okay, we know we've got something else that we're going to need it for. I mean, that would be up to these people here. That kind of goes into my next question that I had is what type of time frame are we looking at from the time we finally know what we're doing and sign the papers and give the money to, I mean, I know the money's in increments, but are we talking a year for all this? Are we talking three months for all of this? No, I, I don't know. Have you on the sign? By the time, yeah, by the time we get started, Don, how long will it take to build it? To get everything to up and get online with it, yeah. I don't, don't hold him to it. <laughs> yeah. Don't hold him to it, please. We've been several months trying to figure out where we're going to put the pipeline. <laughs> so, uh, I want to say, I, I really truly believe that we will have this in operation 18 months from now. I think it will be less than that, but I don't want to guarantee you. But, yeah, but time, because once we get everything done, we have, to, we have to complete all the environmental reports, get all the, everything iron out, and then I have to design it. And then we bid it out, uh, and then we start construction. Yeah, as far as the financing itself, it's going to be done in increments at certain right. points. Right. What, what it will be done is we will draw the money, we as the city right. will draw the money down on an as-needed basis. So it isn't like there's going to be 3.1 million deposited in the city's right. account. It will be on on well, an as needed basis. Now, KDAG, are they going to come out and do inspections at certain levels? <laughs> yes. As part of this loan, the engineering firm has to provide an on-site inspector to make sure that it's built according to our specifications. KDAG also has their own inspector that comes out sometimes monthly, sometimes two or three months. But yeah, they will. KDAG will come and inspect as well. Then I have one last question, and I, I won't have any more. As far as the liner goes, um, is there a guarantee or a warranty or I mean? Well, you get a one-year warranty with it. All these liners, the manufacturers will say the expected life of this liner, and I don't know how they know this, but the expected life is a hundred years. You don't have a hundred year warranty. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a hundred year warranty. Okay, thank you. I do have one question. I know that some states require the operators of water treatment and wastewater treatment facilities to be licensed or certified. Does KDE, KHDE have those type of requirements? Yes, yes, they do, and your city operator does have that certification. Yeah. I have a question. I'm Clarence Messick. Uh, I work in Pratt. They built the ethanol plant down there several years ago. I know some people have heard the horror stories. I've talked to people. Some of them are true. On the construction, things were put in the lines that weren't supposed to be there, and then when they kicked it on, the people that owned the plant had to pay to redo everything. Is there a point in time where we get 
a guarantee, say 30 days, that something comes wrong with the plant, you come fix it, or something gets put in there and it's wrong, in 30 days we're stuck turning it all apart and rebuilding the whole thing. One year warranty. One year warranty upon acceptance of the final project by the city. That everything works fine. Okay. Now, if, if they put in a motor and, and the motor burns out, the contractor will take it out and replace it. Or, but now, if if your operator doesn't have a valve adjusted right or something, that's not a contractor problem. That's not the warranty. Right. Yeah. But it, yeah, like equipment and operating is warranty for one year. Okay. So basically the 3.1 million is just covering everything for one year. 19 years we have a liner and motors and all of those other things that we have to pay for if they break. Yes. I mean that's typical. And that's, yeah, the, the city warranty is typical on, on yeah, the city yeah. shop. The, the most I've ever seen is a two year warranty and it is on specialty equipment when it is a two year. So, But one year is a standard operating practice. But the construction and stuff, it falls back on being bonded. I mean, that, right, yeah. that's your insurance policy for that, basically. Yes, yeah. Pete. This is more for the council, but what about uh, our capital improvement fund? And we're charged every month for several, several years now. And some of that money go towards paying on some of this three point. Um, we did. We do charge a six dollar fee for the capital improvement. We used that to retire our debt from the last water project, and that was uh, paid off. Jim, can you help me there? I think just a year ago. We yeah, made I, th our final I payment. think so. Yeah. So we have accumulated some, but it's at a small increment. So we're not going to accumulate a whole lot, um, but it will be there to be used for sure. That could be used. It could be if council to decides to use it that way. Uh -huh. That's why that's why it's made is to be able to use it for, and it's just for water system. It's specific to water system. Well, right. you're going to have maintenance on down the road, so you're going to have that money to pay for the lighting, maybe a motor. Yeah. You're going to have all this. And so out. that's why we have continued to go ahead and charge that, so that we can look forward to and maybe have some reserve there so that it's not a huge burden again. Okay, I have one thing that uh, the purpose of this public hearing was to inform you. The council has not made any decision on which way to go, but once they're out of the public hearing, we'll be presenting a resolution to the council asking for approval to complete the loan application so we can move forward on this. So information has been gathered, but there has not been any direct action from the council to, sub to submit this loan application to kdh &E. And that's what will be presented tonight to the council to vote on. And the resolution just basically states authorizing the completion of an application to the Kansas Department of Health and Environment regarding a loan from the Kansas Public Water Supply Fund. It is not committing the city to any monies. It is just to submit the application to kdh and &E and to continue to remain on what they call the intended use plan for this amount of funds that have been allotted for this fiscal year by the state of Kansas. Just a minute. Ever. My boss showed up. I'm going home. I'm going to check it to the council. I agree with what they wanted to do. Thank you very much. much. I'm happy. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. I have a question on the application process. If I'm understanding what you said right, this is just an application process for the loan, even if the if it were approved, the council still could turn it down if they so desire. Until they sign on the dotted line for the loan agreement, they are not committed to funds. Um, <laughs> yes, Lou. Is uh, St. John going to buy or issue municipal tax-free bonds at 2.6%? No, no. Or is this uh, KDHE? 
is the KDHE loan to the city at this month's interest rate if they were to sign the loan agreement at 2.62%. How much will that cost over 20 years? I didn't bring an amortization schedule, but I'm sorry. I did it one day, because I thought the loan rate was the one they said. That was last month's interest rate. I've got one that shows what it costs on a 20 year period. Um, on a 20 year on a 20 year payout. Lou, Lou, listen. Um, be the other one, Bob, actually. Uh, I, I had her do two of them, depending on whether you were paying by monthly or yearly. So we just did a monthly deal and a, and a, a month or a yearly payment schedule. Uh, there's a difference of about thirty-two or thirty-seven thousand dollars in interest is the only difference, depending on how your how your payment is. But I believe it was like six hundred and seventy some thousand on interest, correct? Total deal was two eight. Seven hundred twenty three fifty nine drawn. But that well, is that two point seven. That's a two point seven two. If if you if it was on a monthly <coughs> payment schedule, the total deal. Total payments would be 2.815, and that's figuring 30 percent forgiveness. That's figuring the 2.17 loan. Which our interest rate this month is right. less than last month, right. so P and I payments would be lower. I'm sorry, I missed you. This has probably been stated earlier in the meeting, but is that interest rate? Locked in for the yes. once, once the city signs the loan agreement, the interest rate for that month is what it's locked in for the life of the loan. It's not a variable where it's two percent this okay. month and five percent, and it is locked in for the life of the loan. A flat rate, yes, Mary. Um, yes, I do too. So, this vote is going to take place tonight, yes, we hope it does. So, I don't see the city attorney here, but it is understood that no one, mem no member of the city council who has any possibility of profiting one penny from this project, that city council member cannot vote. That is correct. Oh, we discussed that last night. Okay. Troy, that figure is 672, 374, 56. Now, all these figures, figures you've put out, have they been available at the office? I mean, can anybody just walk in and say, I'd like this information? Not really. And I'll, I'll answer that. Because I, I just I'm into this, and I'm kind of no, curious. I, I have something secret? to say about this. When I got the notice of high nitrates in the drinking water two years ago, that was noticed to me that either something was going on or something needed to be going on. About a year ago, I started making a nuisance of myself at the city, camp, at the city hall uh, office and was not satisfied with the answers I was getting and filed a Freedom of Information Act request. So that, what little information they had available at that time, they did turn over with that Freedom of Information Act request. However, They've discussed this at most city council meetings, which are televised, and but which you are can't open, hear, but that's and okay. No, you can't hear them. They, the council meetings are open to the public. We had a, a city council election in November in which this was the major issue, and one candidate even ran specifically on this issue. There was a public forum for candidates. And I don't see anybody who's at this meeting at that forum asking questions about that. There was a tour of the two close by plants that was open to the public. And I see very few people who are here tonight who went on the tour. So in the defense of the city council, yes, this information has been available. But all the costs that they've been well, no, out tonight, that's that what information I was has not been available. That cost breakdown, which would be interesting to know, has not been available. Right. Well, I think that's only been recently developed, so the city council would not have had that information prior to maybe, say, the last what and two we, months. And, we, and that's still changing because we're still figuring out where things are going. 
Yeah, I'd like to make it very clear that we're not trying to hide anything or make anything a secret. Well, I didn't say we're, that. I just wanted to, okay, I can walk in tomorrow and say, I would yeah, like I mean, the I think we're just trying to be, gather all the information we possibly can uh, so we're educated on it and, and so we can help all of you, too. I just, I just don't want anyone to think that we're trying to hide anything. I received yes. this stuff this morning. I went to St. John National Bank and took the numbers that I had acquired the last yesterday from the city and made this myself. This is not a. This is a just a ballpark estimate. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, I believe her name was Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary? Um, you just stated that um, the per a person or somebody who um, could not vote if they were. Uh, possibly going to make some money off of this deal. Yes. Is there somebody on this council that would make money on I this deal? I can't scale? imagine that there is. But I'm just saying. Well, I mean, we would need to know who's <laughs> not going to be voting, right? Well, that's I mean, in the meeting. I don't know. Can is I there that somebody please? that is going to be Yes, John will address that. Can I address that, please? please? Anytime that we have a job, a large job that's going to be bid, if somebody would like to bid it that has a, a business that would be able to bid on that job. It's called a conflict of interest. And so they remove themselves from any discussion or um, any voting with that particular job. But that determination couldn't be made until the final right. decision until made on where all the details were. Right. Well, so, I mean, I'm going to, Kevin Davis, he could very easily put in a bid in. You know, and so I specifically asked him last night, are you planning on putting a bid in? Because if you are, no more discussion from you, please. And he said, no, I would rather have a vote. So. And as far as the injection well, that. You, I'll, I'll say this, man. The only reason that we would even consider that is to save money and in, in, in we will have to, we will pay fair market. It won't be, you know, Bobby can't say, okay, fair market is 10 but cents a thousand. Fair market doesn't matter. If it's one cent of potential profit, that city council member cannot participate. Yes. And we don't now, have, at right now, I have no idea. But, but that city council member may have. I mean, you can't speak to what's in his mind. But, well, you're right. I can't. But we will be aware of the conflict of interest, and yeah. it will be addressed at the time that... So if that there is a vote on this tonight, and a city council member votes, all that this disqualifies no, no, him from voting for the project. project. No, no, no. 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 So the vote tonight is only to submit the application in full to KDH&E. It is not saying we are going to use a particular method. We're going to use the lagoons. We're going to use a disposal well. It is just to submit the application for money. Mary, I think he was on that trip when we talked about that saltwater disposal and we were talking about a figure of $300,000. And if you could put get rid of that water for 10 cents a barrel, wouldn't it be a lot better than putting in a $300,000 bid? No. Oh, okay. Depends on what uh, didn't we have to process all the water through a plant like this for the city of St. John? I have a son who built a house over in Pottenwood Falls, and they put a small plant in to furnish the, the sewers of Pottenwood Falls with drinking water, the jugs. It's all free. When you need drinking water or you've got a baby, you need pure water, they've got it there, you just pull up there and fill your jug, you fill 20 or 100 or whatever you want to fill. But the other water, you can pay it, you can put water your lawn, you can garden anything you want to. And it's real cheap. And you're going to get yourself into a hell of a mess here if you put a plant like that. I'm nine years old, and I've drank this water all my life. I'm still here. <laughs> I, I, I'm against you 100%. Uh, I think you're just going to get the city in debt again. And our taxes have already gone up so don't much in the last 20 years. I built my house, the taxes were $18,000 what it cost me to build it, $18,240. And 
My taxes for the first year were two hundred forty-four dollars. I know they're about fifteen thousand dollars in forty years. And there's got to be a stop. So you've got to stop spending money. Uh, actually, sir, I am working on the Cottonwood Falls project also. <coughs> they are on the same level as what the city of St. John is right now. Yeah. They are ha Their water treatment plant was not in compliance. They are going to have to build a new plant. Yes. You mean you can't for citizens pure water to drink and one thing other and you still have to do the other? And until they get the new plant done, they are required by ADH need to provide that water, but they have to build a new plant because the municipal well, water system is not in But do they have to punish the whole city? No. Treat it well, that's what I'm getting at. No, what I'm saying is they don't have to furnish all the citizens with the free water. Only those categories that KDH and these states are well, eligible for the free water. I've got two private wells. And you better not come and try to close my well down. I'm going to use you know, water along with them. I'm going to drink the water. I'm going to drink it out of the well. That's right. $3,000 gallon for $18 is awful hot. And you use 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever you got it. It's going to get darn hot. I think it's totally. I really do. I've been a business man for a long time. I don't want to see the city get into a mess. If you can do it, all right. Watch what you're doing. Your grand great grandchildren are going to be paying for it. Thanks, Howard. Yes, sir. Uh, I would just like to say that the, the city's vote tonight, as I understand it, is just to either approve or disapprove making an application for the loan. That is correct. As as one of the taxpayers, I would be in favor of the council voting to make the loan application. That gives them some time to continue studying and looking at what's going to be the best way to go. That is correct. That is what Don is doing. He has to put together what they call an engineering report, which is part of the whole application process. And in there, there will be the alternatives, uh, a recommended alternative to the city, and it will also involve operation and maintenance costs, cost of estimates for each of the alternatives. So that is is Don's part of the project. Is that all part of the two three point two million also, or is that above? No, that's, that's part, part of it. That's part of it. Part of it. Yeah. There a few years ago, there was some oil wells drilled down in the Kelch land. Some poor boy operators, oil operators, they didn't put in a, set enough surface pipe, and that's been ruining the water all southwest of St. John. He's he's gone out of nearly a mile to pump water because it's ruined his water, and it's moving this way all the time, and it, it's going to do it from from now on unless they flood those wells back. But you can go east of town where there's no bit of no oil activity at all, and I think you can go out here two or three miles east of town and get good water even in that. There's a few new houses out there. Go check their water. Get some samples from these few houses out here east of town. See what their water is. Do it like a business. Don't just sign something and walk off. Do it like a business. I think Kevin Give me your head. Kevin and Bobby has done a lot of water checking around. Yeah, that's what that's what they should do. There's a few new houses out there. I went seven miles south, mm -hmm. and it's there's zero nitrates out there mm -hmm. at a domestic well. Well, that's it. I don't know about it. Seven miles. What does it cost? Just keep pumping the water back. Back. Well, What does it yeah. cost to pump it back? If you were to go two to three miles or even seven miles, is there kind of like a per mile figure on how much it's going to roughly cost? I mean, I know it's a rough estimate, but you know, I'm sure you can figure twenty dollars a mile or twenty dollars a foot. Right. At least, it'd be more than that. Yeah. So it is a considerable cost to pump it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and again, like I say, that's what Belfry did. And they didn't make it ten years. Right. I've I've not been 100 percent in favor of this. Um, it's a huge amount of money. I mean, there's got to be another way. But uh, I've spent hours and hours 
online on KDHE's website, EPA's website. KDHE has basically just said federal mandates, this is what we want to do. So um, it, if you read it, it says same as, and it gives you a CFR number. So you have to go back and read the CFR number. Um, but it regulates every detail of anything. Um, point, of, point of entry is your, uh, your water meter. They regulate point of entry on, on uh, filtering out turbidity or, or the cloudiness of your water. Your point of use is, is your water faucets. Um, uh, point of source, the source is the well. And uh, their, their requirements are that the nitrate level has to be at, at 10 parts per million or less at the source. If you don't allow you to, uh, like the, the reverse osmosis systems, at, at the, um, the point of use. Um, I did find a variance that the Secretary of the Department of Health and Environment can grant a variance. It's 65-171P, it's and it says that by the best, method, best, best methods possible with relation to cost, the Secretary of Health and Environment can grant a variance but if you read farther down in, in more, more regulations, it says that variance will not change the maximum contaminant level, which is 10 parts per million. What it might do is, and I don't know this because I couldn't find it, it, it might allow the city to put reverse osmosis systems at point of use instead of at source. Now at $400 a system, um, and 635 residential water meters. Um, yeah, I don't know, quick figure, $24,000. Um, I know there's filters on top of that. I don't know what the filters cost. I don't own the system. Um, but does the, you're talking about testing. Now, does the testing have to come from each house at that mm -hmm. point then? See, that's going to be a huge. That, that yes. could be a huge problem. Usually that's what kills individual. <laughs> that stops individual units <laughs> is because in KDHE it's they don't even right now have a standard on, you know, do they take you don't they don't think they're gonna make you test each house every year. Mm -hmm. It's you know, they're still looking, you know, are we gonna allow you to go do a third of the houses each year? The city all the they just don't know exactly how much they yeah, make you. yeah. Is and KHE is, is real not really not fond of that option. Where's the closest lab to where they would be tested to us? Oh, there's a lab in Garden City or in Dodge. Uh, probably the closest. There's one, there's one in Hutch. One in Salina, I mean, yeah, one in Salina. And what's a test like that cost? Forty bucks. I'm, I'm not sure. I was I, I told it's twenty. Is it I, I was told. I'm just repeating what somebody yeah. told me. Yeah. I, I, I think. I mean, my my original thought was there's got to be another way. There's just no way there can be no other way. Um, but more the more and more I read, the more and more it points towards you can do reverse osmosis or ion exchange, and they both produce a byproduct. So where does the byproduct go? The waste. Um, then there's the yearly costs and the, the five-year cost and the, you know, on top of that. But I, I did find another, and this may go towards the, the ion exchange and the, the, the lagoon, um, but there are studies that have been done out there, and, and the U.S. Geological Society in 1998, um, well, they, they made a, they made a uh, grant application to the USGAs in 98, and this was a study using an iron. Uh, it's called non-valent iron. I don't know what that is, other than it's a, some sort of iron. And they went in and they, they trenched it in, um, and near a feedlot. So the nitrates that are coming out of the feedlot, this, this non-valent iron basically breaks down those nitrates into uh, mostly harmless compounds, uh, ammonia, um, I, I don't remember all of them, but it breaks it down. Um, and at that point, in I think 2005, when I read something, there hadn't been, there hasn't been enough study on the effectiveness or the cost effectiveness of using this specific non-valent iron. But it, it does the job. 
So I thought there's still possibility of other ways, but whether those ways are financially feasible or not is, I suppose, the biggest issue. I think that's one of our main concerns, too, is, you know, uh, if we have to turn around and do this five years from now, our costs are going to skyrocket. Uh, I we, mean, we spend $400,000 now, and we spend another million dollars in five years, we spend another million dollars in five more years. Right. It's, it's going to add up to 3.1 uh, eventually. Um, We've just spent months looking at options, and, you know, I think this is what it's come down to. But I, I've talked a lot to people um, around town, and I know, know it's a personal problem whether they didn't watch the council meeting, they didn't go to the council meeting, they don't take the newspaper. Whatever the situation is, there are a lot, a lot of people that have no clue. Zero, they just think, well, it's a done deal. You know? um, they're going to build the plant. They're waiting for the plant to be built. They're on eight streets any day. I, I do want to say that there are a number of people in town that asked for a town hall meeting to where we weren't, this is nothing personal, we weren't limited to three minutes or whatever. There were a number of people that wanted that, and we did not get that. I still think that's needed because, as you're saying, there's a lot of people who just think it's a done deal, but it's not. Well, let me just say here, like, have the nobody, nobody came to me, nobody came to council and ask for a town hall meeting. And, and that's what I'm saying. I know it's a personal issue, and it's not a personal issue. Now. They, did, they didn't go, but a suggestion would be to, you know, you, you send out the, the nitrate levels in the mail. Um, maybe you can send out a breakdown of what went on tonight, you know, a, a better explanation of what, because a lot of people are thinking this is reverse osmosis, and it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is different than the reverse osmosis. So even as simple as that, explaining, you know, <coughs> no, this isn't reverse osmosis, and it's not going to take two gallons of water for every one gallon of clean water, so our water usage in St. John is going to double, and we don't have the water. Um, I think a, a greater explanation would be a big benefit to making this easier. I think you're everybody. probably 100 percent correct. And the, I think you know, the breakdown of the monies that, that you know um, you're going to develop, and okay. we can do that. And but I am going to shut you off, Nick. You've been talking for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's been interesting. I it has been very interesting. It well, has been. I I've I I the last ones to get onto the wagon for one of this. I got my notice about the nitrates. I don't have a six-month-old baby. Big deal. And I'm not 80 yet. <laughs> but you know, it wasn't affecting me personally, and I think that's the way a lot of people have been in town. But then, when you start talking about three point whatever million dollars, then it affects you. And you're not only thinking, okay, I maybe have 20 more good years, I hope. No, but but what about the young people we're putting this burden. this burden on? That's my concern. So I think this tonight, I came in with a relatively open mind, and I've learned a lot, and I'm glad we shared. But I really do think we need some more meetings like this. As for going to see the plants, I was working. I wanted to go, but I couldn't. But I'm sure if you want to go see a plant, anyone in that city, the... Well, the I don't know anything about that. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a building and it has these little things. But I'm sure they would. They <laughs> I know what you know. But I'm sure they would be glad to explain right. it to you. I mean, there's got to be someone in every city that has these that can explain it to somebody. But I do think we need more times like this for our council to give you help also, so it isn't totally on your shoulders also. I understand. I just think the information is important. I understand, but I also will say too, I. I'm going to fully disagree with a lot of people that think this is not hurting us adult people. I'm sorry, but me myself has been buying bottled now bottled water for a month now, and we don't cook with our water and we don't drink our water. I'll comment. To that. Same here. And there might be stuff in my bottled water, <laughs> but me, total as a person, I have no health problems that I know of. But I feel totally different. Bring your mom over, I'll feel <laughs> So I would love to take it to my mom and dad, South of Mexico, because that water is so cold, ice cold water. You don't even have to put water. Ice cold. 
But anyways, health-wise, I think the high nitrates could be possibly hurting all of us. Yes, Troy. Okay, my wife ended up with kidney stone uh, last year. Yes. And, and she started doing all kinds of research, and the only thing she could attribute to was the high nitrates in the water. Yeah. And, and that's what the research, research showed. Now, there's no definitive, uh, uh, re or no definitive answer on it. Right. But, but there's just all kinds of evidence that point in that direction. Yes. So there is evidence that it is affecting adults. Yes. Yes, uh, question. Did I understand you right when you said that the plans were going to be drawn up, mm -hmm. facts and figures, and also alternative solutions in case they didn't want to go with that? Or did I hear wrong? KDH and E requires basically the full gamut to be looked at. There has to be alternatives to look. You just cannot go into KDH and E and say, we want to build plan A. You have to give the advantages, the disadvantages, and that includes cost for each of the alternatives. Now, there will be a recommended alternative to the, the city, whether that's plan A, plan B, or plan C. And actually, there's a plan D, which is do nothing, and and then and, and it's, you know, Katie bar the door, possibly. So um, this is forthcoming yes. for the council to look at and yes. study. Yes. They just don't have access to it. it, it it's in process. This is a work in process, and this is part of that work in process is tonight. And Don has done the beginning uh, layouts of looking at the different options and and that, and he still has to formalize the full report yet that will be submitted to KDH and E for review and approval. I would like to request of yourself, Your Honor, and the council that when Mr. Heller completes his plan and analysis that you hold another community hall, town hall, or public meeting and lay out the options and the costs for the people of St. John. Okay. It's not a problem. We'll all have it up on a big screen. Right. Not a problem. And a matter of fact, I guess we could put it in everybody's City bill when it is and where it is. That would be yes. Email too. Email. That would save some money on the if we have everyone's email address. Well, for the people who are your website. Website. Then okay. they have a website. Yes. Okay. It would save money. Okay. We saw the first about site billing that worked really well. Within the bill, so we wouldn't have second. So check your bills, guys. By the way, before you leave, I want the names of everybody said they don't subscribe to the paper. <laughs> and you can't get that online, can you? <laughs> is that going to be a form the same as it is right now? Public hearing. Just public hearing. Well, is it going to be a? I don't know. I that think we probably, probably need to decide that. Yeah. Have to decide that. Informational. <coughs> Thank you. Informational. Yes. 2011. Is there any additions to the agenda from anybody? I would ask the council if they would please move Rosemary up right after the consent agenda to for the um, author, yeah, author, authorization and completion of the application to KDHE. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Is, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed say no. Thank you, council. Is there anything else? Addition? Okay. Consent agenda, Jonna. To approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 6, 2011, approve appropriation ordinance 0920 in the amount of $40,373.79. So moved. All those in favor say aye. Uh, All those opposed say no. Thanks, Council. Okay. Rosemary. Okay. As I stated in the public hearing, Madam Mayor and City Council members, what I have, and I don't have a resolution number, Donna, so. I wrote it on one of the agendas. 
resolution. What that will allow is the mayor and the city clerk to sign any of the paperwork in conjunction with the loan application only. But does that, that get yeah. guarantees us the loan? Then? What it does is it keeps us on the list for the money. Just an application. It's just it's the sure. application okay. for the money. The city is not committed to the loan until you sign the loan agreement, which is at the very end of the loan application process. And that we still have to vote on, correct? And that will be a separate I mean, ordinance when you do that. Okay, that's what I was asking. And my correction is 754. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, now my question is, where's my idea? Deciding this, when does the interest rate lock in? When you sign that sign the loan, loan agreement. agreement. So, and this is just an example. Say we sign the loan agreement in December, and the interest rate is 2.54 percent. That will be the interest rate for the life of the loan. Okay. It could also be 2.92 percent. So it's just one of those scenarios, how fast we get through the loan application and we get the loan locked in is where the interest rate will be locked. Any more questions, Council? Second. Second. Any more discussion, Council? All in favor say aye. Uh, all those best they have. Thank you, Council. Excuse me while I get around here. <laughs> Do you have the instrument of your Okay. Well, I have it at the office. Okay. They all have a copy of it as well. Okay. Can you have that, John, please? This form states that we had the public hearing tonight. And then the attached documents on five and six, I will have you sign it. Sign that. Right here. Yes, please. Okay. 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 And everything that the city is signing tonight, or I provide copies of when I send it to KDH and E, I will be sending a copy to, to the city for their records. And that's part one of the application. Part three just ask some questions to do with technical capacity of your system. <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to test hers. Yes. Okay. It does not that does not have to be sealed. The only thing that needs to be sealed is the resolution. Oh, no, no, no. And John answered these questions for you. Actually okay. your city maintenance man. Okay, no, okay, thank you. We called him up on the phone and said, What's the answer to this? Okay. Okay, one more for you to sign. This states the city will not hire a lobbyist to go to Washington, D.C. and lobby on behalf of them. <laughs> this one states that the city will follow the state of Kansas Act Against Discrimination, the rules and regulations set forth by state statutes. Okay, but I can't make one in the office. <laughs> <laughs> and then that the last one for you to 
sign is what they call a pre-award compliance report. You just ask if the city has received any EPA monies currently to do any type of projects, and then if there are any civil rights lawsuits pending against the city. And what we did was we called the city attorney and asked him those questions. And at your council meeting last month is when you guys approved the civil rights fair housing policy. You probably did it when you had the yes. CDBG project. So if anyone would come into City Hall and say, Nancy Drew will not rent a house because I'm a single mom and I have six kids and I want to lodge a complaint, Donna has the information that she can actually lodge a complaint with HUD in, in Kansas City. And, that, and then they will follow through with an investigation. So the city was in compliance with that now. All right. No, and there's no signature on me. So the only ones is the resolution okay. that you need to to seal, and then you need the excerpt from the minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Council. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good job. I have a question. Yes, sir. How long before we hear from you? Hear from me? Yeah. Well, part of that has to do how fast he does his speech. Okay. <laughs> I mean, as far as my parts of the loan application, uh, I am going to go ahead off of the preliminary cost estimate and file the application with kdh &E, but realize it is we're, we're not locked into that, that amount. And when we get down, and if, it, if it's refined down to $3 million or 2.9, we'll let William know, and then the loan agreement will be set for, for, for that amount. And, and that's what the council will pass the ordinance on and that, so. So we need to schedule with Don, look at his figures, and the public want to be involved. And look yeah. at that a little. Yeah. And so we and have let us know as soon as possible. Go ahead, Don. Would that be something we just need to have him come present the options when he's presenting to you guys? He yes. can just present to everybody. It doesn't mean that we need to have huge discussions, but at least they'll get informed at the yes. same time that you are. Yes. Is that something you can do, Don? Or is yeah, that you in a very obvious Right now, the first, what we have to do is get our location of where we're going to put the lines. That's yeah. what I'm just kind of waiting on until we get that figured out. You know, yeah. there's no point in me redoing costs and then the line gets moved and I'm, you know, I'm not starting over, but right. I'm about starting, you know. Right. So, is there anyone on council that possibly knows any of those property owners that they could, could talk Mel to? Mel has been working. We've been working okay. on it. We've got yeah. some of them worked out. We've still got a few to... Yeah, we're, get, we're getting closer. Okay. Yeah, we're gaining on it. And that, so once we basically know where the lines are going to be, and he can finish the design of all of his plans and specifications, um, that probably would be the time, you know, to if you wanted to have a town hall meeting, that would would be the time to do it, probably prior to signing the loan agreement. Uh, the city attorney will need to certify to kdh &E before we start construction that all easements have been secured and if we had to obtain any additional property that that has been secured and is under the city's umbrella. Okay. So is, while that still can be a work in process till we get up to bid letting, it's always a cleaner package to have it done prior to going to bids. Once we get the approval from kdh &E on the plans and specifications, there will be a 30-day advertised period for the project. He will send out to, to select contractors, plus he will publish in what they call reading rooms. So if there's a contractor in Oklahoma City or Garden City or Kansas City that wants to bid on those projects, they will be able to find out about it through this reading room. So. And I'm sure you'll probably have some type of qualifications for, for yeah. somebody, especially when you get to the plant part. Um, it will probably be divided up into a couple of sections because a well driller usually doesn't install lines. And so we may have three or four contractors all total on this project. One, one question. If we have the city crew do whatever that 
we decide, I mean, that the city thinks they can do or whatever, do we have to bid that? Does the city have to bid that? And is there any requirements that they have to be able to meet to do it? That's called yeah. force account labor, and I have yet to use that on the project. Okay. If, if you can use, you can get loan forgiveness on the equipment. Like, say, you decide you want to do a, a block of pipe. You have to bid out the pipe according to the specifications, take bids, and do everything just like you're doing a whole treatment plan. You can get the loan and loan forgiveness on that pipe. You can't get anything on your city labor. You won't get a loan, you won't get loan forgiveness on it. That's just your expense. No. And, and that's why I think most cities have not elected to use what they call force account labor. Yeah, I've had, I've been asked this question quite often, and Lewis is the only one I've ever had that did. And like I say, it took, took Ted three years. And what you've got to remember is, yeah, there's probably times during the year that these guys don't have, they're not loaded up on work. But the time of the year when they could be building something, they probably are loaded up, you know, on it. Cold days in the winter, yeah, they may not have like everything to do, but that's not the day you want them out there throwing pipe in the, in the hole. Or deal. pouring concrete. Yeah. So the, the guy from Lewis, did they pay him any extra money or? That's the reason he quit. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, it's not funny in a way. He was pretty oh, sad. He's, that, you know, he saved he them probably $250,000, $300,000. Yeah. And, and they didn't even thank you. Yeah. It's very sad. It was very sad. It really was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I figured in that's fact, why. At, at the at the election after he got done, there was a couple people in town didn't like him. They got elected, and their their reason for running was to fire him. Now after he saved them yeah. two three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Is there anything else that I can do to help you at this point in time? You are very patient. I appreciate you yes. taking oh. the time to answer everyone's questions. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I try to do that because I understand where these people are coming from. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I can tell them that you still are going to have a real low water bill, but that doesn't help them understand that <laughs> oh, my bill's going up. Yeah. You know, what do you, you know, one of the questions that I like to ask is, what do you pay for cable TV? Which would True. you rather have, cable TV or water? My husband would like to have TV. <laughs> 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 I can answer that one. Is out of the question. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, not okay. Okay, and that's fine. That's fine. I, I, you know, I just somebody had asked me about it, and I want to understand that we have looked at it, and I don't want it ever mentioned again. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <coughs> and that's that's probably just as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I hope you get to feel better and have a safe drive home, both of you. Okay. Well, I see. And if you have any questions, Mel has my number. It, <laughs> you guys have my card. If you've got yes, questions, yeah. there's my email <coughs> on there, as as well as my cell phone and the office phone. So, okay. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, no citizen. Any citizen comments this evening? No citizen comments. Mel Chesbro. I have a cyst on the top of my foot, and they city. don't know if it has broken a bone, so I'm Police wearing this to see if it'll ease the pressure on the bone. Do you have anything? Yes, Kevin. Does Matthew Neal live in Pine Bluff? Yes, he does. Do you have any problems with that? With the other guys? Are there any problems with that? Uh, exactly. okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get in I'll ask you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, is there any other questions for Adam? I'm not calling Aaron. Gosh. We'll be the first That's his brother. I know, I don't know that. I don't think I've ever done that to you. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Adam, for being here this evening. Administration, John Adam. Okay, in your packets I included the Planning Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, um, the, the prototypes of what they've gone through and the changes that they've made. They'll have a public hearing, same building, 6 o'clock, and on the 26th, which is Monday, Victor will be here to, to answer any questions and, you know, go over anything that anybody might have. So, yes. Yeah. That I will ask. Has that already been put in the paper? That oh, the public hearing. Yes. Okay. All right. Because I was going to say maybe we should change it to the no. next building. Okay. No. All right. We have to do it like three weeks ahead of time. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. I'm just letting you know. Okay. You know, I mean, you're not required to be here, but. Um, there's any questions at the time after the public hearing and if everything looks as the way they like it and they approve it then it'll go to you guys for approval and so you might want to be here to hear if there's any questions from the public or whatever okay. all right and number two is done is there any questions for john this evening uh, I appreciate everything that you've done on this nitrate um, process and information. You and Mel both. Legal, Don is not here. He had nothing. New business. Is there any new business? Come on there. Old business? Uh, the only thing I'd like to add on that, on the electric rate ordinance, is that the wind deal? Right? Yes. Um, people involved would uh, yes would like to just leave it the way it had, the way it is, with the exception that it be wrote in there that the city provide the services that they're paying for. That's all I ask. So yeah. that it wants to change anything. No rate changes. No nothing like that. All all they want is that it's wrote in there. In, on paper that the city will provide police, fire, all the services that they do to the people in town when it's needed or whatever, or as seen so fit, whatever. Snow removal and all that too? Or? No. Well, I, I don't believe fire, they're worried as much about that as they are fire, and police, and uh, okay. but so, do they, they do I guess, in my own mind, they do deserve the, the services that they're paying for. Yes. And so, and whatever they are, correct. they ought to have them. Yeah. And surely they just want on their request, right? I mean, they just want to call and they come. I would guess. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, I'm sure if they, you know, dispatch just, says... It needs to be in writing and then everybody's happy. Okay. Well, if, if I can say something, anything that, that is city property, you know, for instance, like the tree dump, even though it's outside of city limits, we still patrol. I mean, we still check on it. So, right. if that, I mean, if that's what you're well, talking about. Private re residences, you do not. That like, north of town. Or clear south. Or south. West. You know, even though it's out of the city limits, they're still on city service. You guys don't drive out there. You don't patrol. No. Well, no. I mean, we don't patrol it. No. Right. That's, 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 but will you answer a call out? I guess that would be. I guess that would depend on. I mean, if, if it's in the county, we have a sheriff's department, so okay. there, you know, that would, would be who would handle that. If it, anything outside of city limits, so I guess I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, okay. so I can't accurately answer that. As as long as it's in writing that they will respond and, and for the services that they're paying. That the city, uh, Saint, we can the probably, city of St. John needs to respond. Re respond. That's right. Okay. Like I don't. Personal, I see a problem with it. They're paying for the service they ought to get. Yeah. So, do you want to continue to table this, or do you want to just do what Troy asked, Mel? What do you? Well, the only thing that comes to my mind is the fire department, and that's you know one thing that we discussed was, and same way about the police department was, if the county were not available, if you had a call in the county and the sheriff was not available, and there was a call, would you not respond if they asked you to? 
No. If, it, if, if it's an emergency, yes, because all of our officers are also deputized by the sheriff, primarily for the purpose of providing backup for them. Um, but if it's you know if it's an emergency, <coughs> obviously in town is priority. Um, you know if it's an emergency, then yeah, it's it's we we back up sheriff's department all the time. If it's just a uh, I've got an abandoned vehicle on my you know my yard and I need towed. Well, that's obviously not an emergency call, and that, that can wait until the sheriff's department is free to, to take care of that. I think that was a thought process used when we worked with Greg in the, the services provided that in an emergency, like we just talked about, that you know they would respond. Now, the fire department, you probably, you know, I can't, we can't speak for Michael, and you know, it was the same type of thing that in an emergency, if they needed backup, but you know, their their rig is more of a city unit, but if they needed man hire and for a structure fire. Yeah, for a structure fire that he did say that they would respond. So yeah, and would be out driving that fire truck out in a field or something. Field. Yeah. I, would, I would think that would definitely be something you would want to run by Dom before you made any kind of vote on. Right, well, and if well, we're going to change something in the ordinance, we're going to have to. Yes, and I mean, if it was residential, you know, like north of town, Yes, our fire department, our city fire department, that close to town. As long as it's in writing, yes, as I long believe as it's in it writing. will be okay. satisfactory. All right, we will discuss this at the next meeting then and have Don come up with something in the meantime. That would be fine. Okay. All right, so three is taken care of. So number two, Centennial Court Alley. Folks, I checked into this. The city does own those alleys. So Discussion over then. Discussion over, thank you. Oh, do I need a motion on that, Donna? No. Okay. Large animal, the wet well head protection. Still want to table that? Yeah. And then we adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in favor say aye.